there's only one reason in the world I'd ever, for, ever, ever fade a Metallica track for, and that is if I'm talking to one of them, and I am at the moment. Lars Ulrich, he's in a hotel in Minneapolis. He's doing a gig there tonight, along, of course, with the rest of Metallica, because he hasn't gone solo yet, have you, Lars? Uh, no, and uh, that's not something I or anyone else in the band plan on doing, hopefully, for at least 10 or 15 years. I hope in, on wood. <laughs> yeah, I hope that's the case as well. Just let me back announce that track. It was Master of Puppets. It's still a, a classic in its own right. Well, how do you how do you view it? How do I view it? Yeah. Um, that's actually um, that's one of my favorite songs to play actually every night. That's uh, and it's also it's sort of um, it it comes on right after the uh, the bass solo and so forth. So it really gives everyone a. A much needed kick up the backside there and uh it's just you know i love playing that song live it was funny earlier when you were playing ride the lightning and i was listening in and uh like i was telling you off offline which was that uh, we haven't played that song in you know about three years <laughs> and it was quite fun to hear it and i almost completely forgot how that went right. a couple of nice things in there there is actually. I mean, I, I, I haven't played it for about two, or, two or three years myself, and there, as it develops, it really develops extremely well. Yeah, it's funny how you um, sort of lose track of some of the things you've done before. Let's talk about one. The one. Yeah. Now, let's first and foremost. Quite a number of people might not have seen the video, though the video is being shown certainly in rock clubs around. I'm pretty damn sure yeah. I've seen it on MTV Europe, and I've got a copy at home. And if people haven't seen it, then they're just going to have to to try and picture what you're about to, I hope, uh, do in terms of an, an explanation as to how you came to ma make it first. Not necessarily what it is. How did you come to make it? Physically make it. Film it, construct it, edit it. Um. Well, as as most people hopefully should know by now, via via various interviews and so forth, um, it it um, you know, the idea basically started coming together when we found out that there was a movie that had been made around the um, around the uh, book and and where the lyrics idea came from and so forth. And Peter Mensch brought the um, brought the idea over to us when we were touring actually in Europe back in October and said, look, you know, here's the movie, blah, blah, blah. Why don't we see if we can try and do something really off the wall, which would be to uh, try and, and show us playing the song, you know, very, very sort of subtle and low key, but try and get the, the, the sort of the storyline across to what goes on with the lyrics in the song by showing ex excerpts from this movie. And, um, you know, we bought the rights to the movie, so forth. We had a guy out in Los Angeles edit and take out the main pieces of the movie that would best get the storyline across. Um, we filmed us just jamming on the song down in L.A. back in December. And um, then came the process, which, you know, took the longest and was the most difficult to do, which was for this guy in L.A. to uh, put the whole thing together. You know, there were a couple of problems. One was we didn't want the song just to be merely like the sort of backing track for um, for the you know the, the movie and the idea so it, it just seemed like it was sort of you know background music and we but we also you know really wanted the story to come across and, and have all the dialogue in there and so everyone could really understand what the hell was going on and that was uh, a lot harder to do than I think we initially thought but after about a month of, of doing that stuff back and forth it finally came together in January and and we basically um, saw it and liked it and decided to go with it because we had a great agreement with Electro Records, which is our record company over here, that if we didn't like it when it was over, we would just uh, toss it away. <laughs> 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 it At was... the expense of someone, but certainly not us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, but a very, very adventurous way of looking at, if you like, hardcore rock. Um, I would certainly like to... Uh, to think that it's a little different, you know, like, as everyone should know, we've, you know, purposely avoided, you know, videos for many years, and we really wanted to stay as far clear of, of the standard, you know, you know, band on stage, you know, lights and all that crap, and, uh, you know, we feel that, you know, whether people like it or not, or, you know, there's some people that I think it, the initial, you know, yeah, the new Metallica videos here, and I think people expect, you know, to be, you know, hit in the face with this just wild manic thing that comes flying at you. And then I know that the initial reaction from p 
people, you know, the first time they see it is one of, of I think, maybe a little sort of, wow, <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> and I think that that, in the end, is pretty cool because I think once you start seeing it a few times, and I was thinking earlier when you were saying that it's being shown in a lot of rock clubs around England, I, I'm not sure that that's the best place to see it, if you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think that you really have to sort of sit and hear the dialogue and then really focus in on this thing. And if you're in a rock club at four in the morning, <laughs> pissed out of your head, <laughs> you might not get the full idea of what the hell is going on. So that's why we've decided to um, basically as quick as possible put it out in a home video form. And, and I think it's gonna be available in England within about three to four weeks in home video form. Yeah. So everyone could hopefully get a better chance of understanding what the hell this thing is about. <laughs> it really is an excellent piece of work and it does complement the intensity of the track as well. It's brilliantly conceived and well executed. Well, thank you. You know, you, you really ought to be proud of it. Well, I think um, now that we've lived with it for a while, I think that, um, I mean, we obviously are very proud of it, but I think that we just, you know, what's so, you know, satisfactory about it is that it's just something that I think is, is really very different from what we've seen anyone else do. And, you know, Metallica, that's one of the things that we get off on the most is just doing things that other bands, you know, sort of haven't done yet. So Pushing out the frontiers. Well, <laughs> you know, I don't want to say that, but just being a bit different. So. Certainly. And also, yeah, being innovative as well, you know. Well, yeah, it's just, but, you know, when you're working and, 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 and doing things, it's just... You know, it's a real challenge to try and just be different, and it's you know the easy the easy way out is always just to follow in the footsteps of whatever everyone else is doing. But you know, when we're trying to do these things, it's it's kind of fun just to try and come up with ideas that are so silly and so out there that you just have to find a way of making them work. Well, you certainly made it work in video form, and it's in our charts at number eighteen as a single over here as well, and it's. As I was yeah, talking to some thing. people up there in Newcastle last Saturday, Lars, and this we were playing this, there's something in people's eyes. This is real people who like real rock. There's something in their eyes when they hear the track one. It's right. out on a limb. It really is. And I'm going to well, play it now. Okay. So uh, I won't keep you there for any length of time, for any, you know, any more time, but I'd just like to say thank you very much for the time that you've given us. Of course, of course, and like I said, I hope, even though that this is not confirmed at the moment, but we are looking at the putting together some stuff in um, October, so if everyone, um, you know, mm -hmm. hangs out for a while, we should be back over in about six months. You get here, and you'll have yourself a massive audience any time you come. Okay, thanks, L Tommy. Lars, thanks a million. Okay, cheer up. Bye-bye right. now. Thank 
streaks in me Just like a wartime novelty Tied to machines that make me be Cut this life off from me Hold my breath as I wish for death Oh please God wake me
so much. I really do. Not only that, I admire her so much. Uh, I've been doing this job, I don't know, all my life, I suppose. More or less all my life, and doing this one for uh, ten and a half years. And before this, I was worked for other radio stations and so on. Playing rock music a lot of the time. And every once in a while, a rock record comes out that you know has just hit the spot, hit the spot of the generation is into the music at the time. Whole lot of Rosie by ACDC, whole lot of Love by uh, by Led Zeppelin, right? Freebird and things like that. They just become absolute classics, and that is one of them. It's such a great record. It's one, and it's by Metallica. And Lars Ulrich was on the blower there, the telephone from Minneapolis, and they are doing their last gig tonight in the United States of America. And he did say, though it is not confirmed, that it might be here in the United Kingdom in October. Get the video, too. Wow.